And there's Nancy. And I'm going to uh, give Anne the share screen rights. Whoops. Not yet. OK. Tell me when. You, you should have it now. You no. should have it. I do. Hang on. <clears throat> Let me just see if I got the right one up here. All right, hang on a minute. I got to do one more thing. I'm going to stop here for a second. Let me go in here. I'm just, I'll be back in one second. All right, hang on one minute. I am almost there. All right. See if we can get this to work right. Come on. <clears throat> All right. Can we see that? Yes. All right. Yeah. I'm going to make it go in black. Too bad Sam's not here. He would understand. I figured out. <laughs> they, they do let you go in black, but I can't change. <laughs> I can't change um, the color of it. It's like way too big. Yeah. All right. How about that? Good. Yep. But now it's white. Right. And I have to go big in order to change it the other way. Well, maybe not. Let me try this. Let me try this. Now, so I'm going to go full screen. Yeah. Doesn't let me do it that way. So it's white is what it's going to be. What if you do fit to screen? If I do a fit to screen... It'll be behind the uh, people. Or fit to page. All right. And now if I go full screen here, it still blows it up, but you can't see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna it's coming up full size on my screen. Okay. So. So much for technology. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So this one is... Um, Call the contest winners, I believe. It didn't. So. And we have two versions of it. Why don't we, why don't, Ira, how about you You tackle this one? Because you did another version of it, which we'll show you a version after. You want to critique this a bit? It was interesting that I took the exact same shot. And I obviously, I like the shot. Um, I think what was trying to accomplish here is to focus on the gold tooth and the gold eye patch, which I think is wonderful. I like that the background is, is blurred. The, co the colors are great. They really pop out at you. And uh, interesting characters. I think you can very easily take out that spot under her nose and over her lip. That's, that, that's trivial. But um, I, I enjoy looking at this. I think it was very well captured. Of course, I catch you the same shot so I'm, I'm partial to it so i'm <laughs> going to show iris shot hang on I'll go back there we go nice the one thing that is interesting is the composition just basic composition in this so if i go back here to um the other one a lot of stuff in the background yes it is blurred and the blur was appropriate and did help is a tree coming out of the back of his head. But the, the the two subjects are far apart. They don't have that same sense of connectivity um, that they do in this one. So it's kind of a matter of, um, I think, waiting in, for the position and waiting for the characters to be where you want them to be or tell them to go where you want them to be. Um, just thing that, that I mentioned something about the, the mark on her lip, and I have the same mark. Right yeah. on the other side. Yeah, right. yeah. And I and I, I would say that, that it was very very difficult there with the lighting because this is what I would call very harsh <laughs> lighting. Um, if we go back here to, um, hang on, I'm in a jam mode. That's interesting. It just jammed. Let me let me go back. Hang on. Um, okay. If, um, 
you look at the lighting here, it's just across the space where the shadows are. It just was really, really harsh. And that's very, very hard to uh, to deal with on a day like that. And that's sometimes what happens when you're there later once that sun comes up. So um, I, right. I, would, I would just add that, you know, I, I agree. I, I mean, I love the composition in, in Iris and I actually love the black and white. But in this one, for me, the only thing I would, besides the dot under her nose, I would just crop off that part on the right and I know you'll lose part of his jacket, but I don't think I think there's enough going on. You don't need it. It's just it's just that I keep looking over his shoulder. Um, I don't really mind um, the stuff in the middle because it is it, they are kind of interesting colors. But I would just crop it with the line of the tree. I'm just seeing if it will let me. Oh, hang on a minute. But you know, I didn't mean you had to do it now. I'm just saying. I think that's cool. Yeah, there you go. You see, then I think it's a more intimate photo. And um, I, I focus on them. Yeah, the uh, the woman in red and behind is, you know, draws right. your attention. But I think, I don't know. To me, I think this is still a really good photo like this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, let me see if I can move through this. It's probably going to jam again. Hang on. Mm. All right, so uh, all right, who wants to take a shot at this one? I'll say something. I love this image. I love the detail in the I, first of all, I love her position. It's like you know, she's just sort of relaxed and posing for the camera in this sort of look at me kind of way so i think that that's really interesting whether she posed for the photographer or the photographer just happened to catch it um i just think it's really really good and the sharpness and the detail in the clothing and the skin tones are all really really good i i think it is a little a little bit flat um so i would try to boost the contrast a little bit but that might mess up the skin tone. So I'd have to see what that did. Maybe not, maybe yes. Yeah, I think you can add, um, well, in elements anyway, and if you're in um, raw, you can uh, add shadow to it. And I think a little shadow might help. Uh, once again, I would also crop off yeah. the panel. Okay. It's all on the right with the red at the bottom. Um, I love the blue. I love her pose. I love the blues but I think you can still uh, come in a little closer. <laughs> if we to do that, it would look like, let's see. I don't, mind, I don't mind if you come in and actually crop off part of her shoulder just a little bit. I'm not you, David. You're always a tight crop. <laughs> yeah, I am a tight crop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, except the head is leaning in that direction. That's what I like about it. Really? Yeah, it's a diagonal. Breaking the rules. There we go. <laughs> See, I would look at it the other way if you wanted to, if you wanted to crop. So that how again I say this every week, leading leading the person off the photo. And to me, this looks like you're leading the person off the photo. If you did it on the other side and crop in, she wouldn't be I I, I I, I think that uh, she wouldn't be looking like where you're looking. You follow what I'm saying? I, I, I hear what you're saying. I I'm, 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 uh, I've already put together the presentation, I think for it's a next week, whatever, for breaking the rules. And this is what I consider one of the breaking the rules. I don't think it always has to be that way. The only way, and I think Ira could work both ways. The reason I also liked cropping off the right was because of that red on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That seemed really distracting to me. But you could but you could probably change the color of that too if you wanted to keep that side. Just select that area and just desaturate. Right. Yeah. And that would work too. If you like keeping it that side, yeah. I also I think just circular lace in the bottom left. Right. I wouldn't want to lose that. Right. Love this here. 
and the arm coming up with, the arm is part of the attitude here with her fingers against her face leading up to her face. It's a leading line. She's got a very interesting expression. It's kind of like all knowing and like, you know, like kind of like amused by us who were shooting her. <laughs> she was, uh, she was interesting. All right, anything else on that one? Okay, let's go here to, um, I'm not sure that this was one. Yes, this was one. Um, can I just go ahead? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, I I think both of these guys are interesting. I think the the photograph tends to be more of a snapshot rather than a photograph. I think I would have zeroed in on either character or parts of the character to um, really have a more dynamic photo because you have material there that hasn't really been um, addressed. The background's very distracting. The characters are standing so far apart. Um, if you chose to choose one of the characters and zero in on them, whether you did it by cropping or by bringing yourself forward, that's what I would do. I love the background on this photo. I think that's what helps make the photo. Um, I, they are too far apart, but there's nothing you can do about that. But I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I, I like the background. I would leave the background in there. Use the colors that seem to match what they're wearing and all. I think it accents the picture. Well, it makes it look more like a snapshot than artsy photograph. It depends what you're after. Adrian, my I, opinion. I, I I agree with Barbara. Um, it's colorful, but we have to make a decision here about the purpose of the photographs. And if we're trying to elevate our craft and make the photographs a little bit more artistic, then this is a snapshot. Um, how, about, how about taking the person, uh, and how about taking the person on the left out of it and crop it to the basket? Hold on. Crop it to the basket. Well, you have to we'll lift it up to the top and see. Oh, yeah. It's still more of a snapshot. You know, you, if you zero in on the hands, on the um, on the uh, organ or the face or the costume, um, to me, this is more of a snapshot. I mean, you've captured the action, but you haven't really made um, an artful picture. Yeah, and I think one of the problems um, with with everything we all shot is what Anne said earlier. It was so, the sun was so bright, it was hard to get any dramatic lighting, um, you know? So everything tends to be a little flatter. Well, some of that, if if you have um, the knowledge you can fix in Photoshop. Yeah, I don't know that there's too many other ways. As I would only tell people that we use the term snapshot. Sometimes the shots that we take are what is also referred to as an establishing shot. And then from there, you look at this and say, what else could be done with this? Where else could I go with it? How else could I crop, turn? What could I take out? Uh, what could I crop out? What could I remove? How can I turn the crop? How can you work the image to maybe give it a sense of being something other than the first shot you take when you look at it? What else could be done with it to make it more artistic or more um, creative? So anyway. So I think it's really creative if you look at the, the shadow lines on Eileen right now um, through the blinds. It looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So I'd like to take a shot at this for a minute because <laughs> this was most interesting and I'm gonna blow it up a little bit so you can see where I was kind of getting into. Let me back off first and say that I really do like this image. I do think there's a lot here to work with, but there's an awful lot going on with this. There's a distracting background, even though it's blurred, it looks like it was a, a, an attempted blurring, which, and I'm gonna say this, I am gonna clap and commend those who are trying to edit and play with new aspects of editing tools. I, I, Cause when you do this, you'll get better and better at it. But when I looked at this, the first thing I saw was, if you look here, you mm -hmm. see that something was going on here. Yeah. And then you see, I can't drag this that way, but- It was you, the healing tool. Yeah, there was something that went on here and it's all blurred up in here and blurred down here. And so oh. I kind of saw this as somewhere I wanted to go, but I couldn't really undo this tool that was used here. So the only thing I really could do with it, and I, I love her face, I love the angulation of her head. I love the tattoos and the detail. I love this down here as well. I mean, my eyes just keep drifting to this. So if I, if I look at the subject and I can delete this stuff going on back here, uh, what I did quickly because I couldn't undo what happened with the tool was, Kind of something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, it could have been any background. I just wanted to do something quickly to just get rid of the distraction back here and just focus on this course. Her basket now is being carried without anything over her arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because if you look at it back over here, there, there was something over the arm. Um, but um, where is it here? Stop it. You can it see was, where the basket had something. It got distorted in the in the editing process. But um, it was an interesting look, an interesting picture in my one. I really loved it. It was something to work with. Who else wants to go on this one? I also think, I mean, to me, this is a great establishing shot. Yeah. Because I there were so many places I would go in, you know, just her her face and her neck is pretty incredible and then I also I love the the leather with all the things hanging from it on her hip I think there's another shot in there um I I do I do think you know there's there's probably like three or four shots in here yep just it just going in it I, has a ton of possibilities it really really does even the even the detail in the little bit of fabric under the flowers is kind of nice. It was a very, very good C. Picked out a great subject. So anybody else? Okay. I'll back off on this one and let's go here. Oh, this is another interesting one. Okay, Game of Thrones. A little far away, maybe, perhaps. Could be zoomed in a little tighter. Seems like another establishing shot where you see what's going on, but you're not really um, appreciating it because there's a lot there. She looks like she has a pretty face, interesting costume. She's wearing cool boots. It looks like she has knives all around her, but you can't really grasp anything because it's, again, more of a... Um, establishing shot instead of an artsy one. Right. I would like to know what the um, photographer thought the subject was. Because if the subject is her, there's way, she's like, um, if you think about the percentage that she is of this photograph, she's like, I don't know, 20% of the photograph. And if she's the subject, I want way more of her the trees and the sky are not really important. The sides are not important. Um, you know, the stuff that's right above her, the the curved areas with whatever those things are, that's part of the picture. But the rest of the stuff is like superfluous to her. I think if I recall this being there when this was shot, 
there was only a fraction of a second to grab her because she was leaving her throne very quickly. And she just went up there to sit and then run off to get the picture. I don't think anybody really had the time to get anything more than that with where she was, but uh, there's good, and I'm gonna say this because I know this is somebody that's inexperienced with us. There's good clarity in the picture. Um, it's it's rather symmetrical, um, maybe a little bit more on the left and the right. Um, I, I think that the lighting again was very, very harsh, very difficult to get. It's a little blown out in some spots, but there's also some shadows in it. But um, right, it's an establishing shot. I wish it was more time to get into her on a different angle and almost get in alongside of her to get a totally different look. Dave, got what about crop? What about cropping it? Can you try and see what it looked like cropped? Sure. Let's come all the way. Let's come down. Yeah. Um, Can you bring in the left side as well? Hold on. The, the program doesn't quite cooperate. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, I'm cropping in Dropbox and I'm like, really? This now gives it a totally symmetrical. Hang on. I come up here a little bit. See if I can come down. Get down. Maybe it'll let me come up. Mm. And then I can come down. I have to kind of cheat with it. This is a rather symmetrical look. Um, I would I would come in up from the bottom too, like yep. just below her knees where her legs are crossed. I don't, you know, I, I think you get the boots. I don't know that you need to see all of them. And there we go. Let's come in really tight here. We don't need all of it. Right. Now she's definitely the subject. I'm even going to come down here. All right, let's see if we save it. It'll probably, there we go. Yeah. 100% better. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Now you see her costume, you see her face. There's a little, there's shadow both on her face and her costume and her surroundings. It's uh, just 100% improved. Absolutely. So yeah, this was a very good shot. It just, sometimes you just have to push yourself a little more to crop and go in and look. Just as they say, work the shot, but it's there. Good job getting the shot. Getting yeah, the it's a great shot. When yeah, the details are right there. You know what? When, when you went in closer, you don't have to go back. When you went in closer, there was, because the light was harsh, there was a little softness on her. Yes. And I, thinking you know kind of if you put a more of like a glow around her it might look like really special too it might have all right so now we're into guns and roses five, five well going to guns oh i like that shot guns here we go okay so this is what i saw with guns and roses and i loved it I really did. I love the tattoo. I like the composition. I like the crop wood. There's no head. I don't need to see her head. I'm into all of this stuff that happened down here. But the thing that drew me right away was this pole here. And yeah. this is got distorted somehow. So it, it's almost impossible to kind of get this out without working on it. But if you use the scale and object removal, you can take a piece of this and move it up here. Just circle it and just duplicate it and move it up. And then you would get something, and it probably could have been cropped tighter from the bottom too, and I, I didn't do that, but I just want to go here because I just said quick. Um, and now this is clearer here and mm. the post is kind of out of it. I did not spend a lot of time working on this, but, and I probably would crop some of this off, Dave. Your thoughts on a crop? Yeah, I for me, I see. I don't know that you like even have to see the stuff on the left. Yeah. I would crop into her skin because I think the tattoos are fabulous. Try and, that. Let's see what we get. I played with that too. And then I would let's come here. I would bring it up from the bottom. Yeah. Yep. So like right, right 
just past her elbow. I agree. Hang on. Stop it. <laughs> well, it won't go up because you, you got to lower it from the top. No, it's <laughs> just it's stupid, right? It's very, very touchy. Yeah. Now it let me be it. Come here. There we go. So I think that's nice. The focus is on her arm holding the cup now. Yeah. So that's where it all is. It's all Much right better. in the cup. And, and, and it was a really, really good see because um, I know that the photographer was getting very close to seeing something special about this. So really good see. You know, I I honestly think that might be nice in black and white too, because the pink is, to me is a little distracting around her waist, and I think there are good lines and uh, shapes in the tattoos. So I, I think it'd be an interesting black and white shot. Yep. Awesome. All right. So here we go. And then we've got, okay, who wants a shot at this one? Well, I, I personally, I think going back to what Barbara said, it again feels like a snapshot, but when I look at it, what's interesting to me is that, um, She's playing the drums, and one of them is a little blurred, so you get a sense of movement. I just wonder, I don't know how clear it is, but I just wonder if you kind of came in on just her. But I did play with cropping this out that way. Um, I, I think there are more problems than the crop, and I just think it is extremely clipped in terms of the whites it's it's very blown out we lost a ton of detail yeah her face definitely her face um here lost like shot through something they're like those circles there looks like it shot through like the ghosty stuff around her yeah And I would say we can take it up here. Yeah, again, you got to lower, yeah. Well, let's just say we did that. There's a lot of detail, Missy. It was a little bit of a slow exposure. I think when I looked at it, it was about an 80th of a second. So um, that's where the movement is coming from, the, the one drum stick. But yeah, I'm not sure what's happening over here. And around her head also. Around here. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, it's up in here. It might Straight have been getting a reflection off of something, whether it was metal drums or something, because it's just too bright. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of was one of those ones where I, I just couldn't quite get a handle on, on, on it was unresolved for me, totally, so. I can just say something because I took a lot of pictures of her. I just found her very photogenic. Um, and because you had such a long time to be there, I mean, she played for a long time. There was enough time to try playing with different exposures on your, you know, whatever camera you were using. Um, and I would have tried that. Like there's a lot of different exposures you could have tried if it was a phone or it was a camera just to see what you would have gotten to work that subject a little bit more. All right. So here we have our owl, our little barn owl. Um, being the bird that I am, I'm going to say this is a very, very difficult attempt to shoot this with an iPhone. And I believe it was an iPhone shot um, because it, it doesn't quite have the pixels to be able to really capture the movement and still give you that sense of clarity. Um, the shutter speed just is never going to jump to what it needs to be. Um, maybe the newer iPhones, I don't know. I, I would say this, 
It was a very, very good attempt at grabbing it. The bottom of the legs got cut off a little bit. You could crop, but even cropping, you might have to turn this into a totally filtered watercolor or something different to, to give a sense of um, not missing the detail here. Sharpen it a little bit and then throw through a filter and try to do something um, very artistic with it. But um, the wings are out. The wing position was good. The face was good. If it was sharpened and cropped, um, it was a great attempt at catching that bird. That bird is was a challenge. I know all of us sat there and played with it. Adrian, did you get it? Nope. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't either. But and I had the same issue in that. And I I used my camera, but the focus went to the trees. Yeah. The bird, you know so. I wasn't focused enough on the bird. And I think that's what happened here too. It's like the trees seem sharper than the bird. Yep. And, and that is what the iPhone will do. You can't, a lot of times you can tap your finger on the iPhone and tell it where you want it to focus or what part. You're not going to do that with a moving bird. I have yet to find my iPhone shoot anything well in the way of a bird in flight or, or an animal moving or something fast. Because it's going to choose where it wants to focus. I'll tell you what I do with the sports if I'm using my phone. Um, and you probably could do this in some circumstances. You have to find something, some other stationary object that is a, a, lo a locator. So let's say the guy was there and, and he was exactly the same distance as the bird was from you. You could focus on him, lock the focus move over and then wait for the bird to fly into that space and shoot. <laughs> so, it works for sports because you so can anticipate. I, See, I was, gonna... You could do it for sports because you know what's going to happen next, but it's hard to do that with an animal. That's correct. And it's hard to do that with a bird because their movement is so fast. Um, I would say my hat's off to the photographer trying because that's the only way you really get better at these things is to is to, is to shoot them. But um, if you can get the bird when the bird just opens his wings before he actually takes off and you put it in a burst mode. So before the bird is really lifting and it's still in that spot that you've got the focus already on it, then you got a shot. Then you have a shot with it. And last year when they did, that guy did stuff with, it was a different guy, but when he did it with the birds, more open. It was in an arena and there was a wall behind him. So it was solid color behind him and the bird. So it was a lot easier to shoot. And you know, it made it simpler, easier to focus and whatever. The trees and looking up at the in the sky made it complicated. David, you said you tried to shoot this with your camera. Do you have a track? Does your camera have a tracking um, focus point? If it does, I haven't uh, tried it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can work on that. Okay, mm. here we go. Um, All right, I'll have a go at it. Lacks a little clarity. It needs to be cropped from the right. Um, and um, again, kind of more of an establishing shot, but there's, there's some cool detail in here. It, if you were to look at a, a crop version of this, and you changed your, um, I took the color cast out of it as well. And I added a little sharpness to it. I just sharpened it a touch in Photoshop elements um, and cropped from the right. And you have a little bit more color tint in the sky, but that's where that would be. Thoughts? I, I have a comment um, about titles. And I think that the t whoever is took this, it's a perfect title. And sometimes whatever you title your image can add a lot to the image. And I, I just think it 
when I li- when I heard King is courting in my brain, I looked right away to their hands and saw what he was doing here. And I just want to praise the person for choosing that because it's not easy to find um, a title that's really good. It's also nice how she has this very demurt look on her face. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he's very, you know, peacocky. And so it, yes. it, it really fit the title. Yeah. Again, it's always great. And this is, you know, it it takes a long time when, because I was always afraid to go close to people and shoot shots um, when I first started taking more serious pictures. So um, just go with it and keep going because, you know, the braver you get, the better shots you're going to get. And most people don't mind, surprisingly. I mean, I shot from the back for years because I was too afraid to shoot from the front. So <laughs> just, you know, have confidence in yourself and just keep at it because it's, it's, uh, this could be just a beautiful, beautiful shot either on one or the other or from a different angle. And also that this is the perfect venue to try that because these people got dressed up and came there because they want their pictures taken. They want people looking at them. Um, <laughs> that's the purpose. So it's a really cool place to go to get gutsy about getting in close. Um, I think also just to note that the people are not really in focus. The background is in focus. So I don't know whether this was a camera or a phone, um, but that's what happened here. But, you know. Dave? Anyway, yeah, when when I have something I've, that I really like and it's not quite in focus, whatever, that's when, I don't know, I, I don't know, Ira, if you do this, but I, I start playing around. That's when I start playing around with filters. And, you know, it give it, give it a look. It could give, I, I would still crop a lot out of this painting because uh, I think the couple is is key. But I think, you know, playing with filters could give this, it, it's a king and his lady, and it, it could look like an old painting or something. I don't know. There just might be ways to, there are so many filters that you can play with that could Good make it into I something use interesting. Topaz, um, sharpen, Topaz Sharpen uh, app, and it's fantastic. They could take that king and make him pop out and be completely in focus with just the press of a button. Wow. Now, I don't know how much it costs just to do the topaz, but if, if you want to look into it, it's the topaz sharpen feature. And I'm telling you, it can detect whether it's blurry because of motion, whether it's blurry because of, um, uh, for, for whatever reason, the, the, uh, or it was out of focus, it can determine why it's out of focus, why it's blurry, and it can fix it. It's an incredible app. I, I, I'm only going to say that some people are just overwhelmed right now dealing with Photoshop elements. So I did sharpen this. I do use Topaz. That's what I use too, Ira. I agree with you. But in terms of those who are just strictly working with Photoshop elements, this was sharpened in Photoshop elements. And it's fairly decent at this point, as well mm -hmm. as uh, I used a level on it um, to, I had to level out the, the, the blown out areas, but um, I, the Topaz is just a, a fabulous, fabulous app. Really is in so many ways. Really great. Here we go. What do we think about this one? I love the legs. I just wish that you had more room in the front than you could get the bottom of the leg. Either that or crop it out all together and just have the, the cabs in there. A lot of misdirection in that one. With feet. <clears throat> Dave, your thought? Um, yeah, I for me, I would just take out the background and just right. I don't mind the shoes and the legs the way they are, yeah. but I would but I would just take out everything else and put it against black or something or All right.
right, so what's the background change on that one? And I'll say something here. So I appreciate the fact that the person um, changed out the background, but this is an example where I would have used a textured something, not just a color, because th to me, this just, it looks like either he was in front of a red cement wall, which I, I happen to know he wasn't, um, but it took away all the interestingness of him to have him against this flat background. Um, so I, I, I think they did a good job. You know, I don't see any artifacts, at least looking at it now. Um, so I think, yay for doing it, but try playing with different kinds of backgrounds. So let me ask you, Anne, if you put in a texture that you got from one of the, one of the programs, does that make it using somebody else's art versus this way that you're not using somebody else's art? I don't think so, because if somebody put this in right here, they're using somebody else's background in Photoshop elements. There's a million of those textures and those backgrounds and those skies out. And and Ira, I really think at this point, trying to police that or even trying to get a, a handle on it is crazy. I would encourage people to shoot their own skies and to also shoot backgrounds where you see them. But to me, if somebody put this in, let's say the Valencia Fall show or somewhere else, and it clearly is a background that was swatched, switched out, it might be just a color that they changed, but it could be that this was a color background that they had. So, you know, I think the essence of the picture was not touched, meaning the falconer and the bird um, and all the little detail in it. I think that it's no worse than taking the brush and taking the background out by putting a black brush on it or a white brush on it. No, I, I, I agree with you as far as this background, and I'm not disagreeing, but I think that there's a difference between this type of background and a textured background. No? I think it almost gets too hard and too difficult to even get into what's what's purchase you can get textures and backgrounds you can also make your own you can make a million you could add texture to this if you wanted to um, you could add shadows and color to it if you wanted to there's a million bat ways to create textured backgrounds or skies you know so i i don't know i mean my feeling is that as long as the essence of the picture is what it is i just think that it's almost too ridiculous to, to try to police it because there's a million of them out there. Every program's got them. Photoshop Elements has it, Photoshop has it. Um, Topaz has it. If I put something through Topaz and it changes an essence of a color or whatever in the background, we use Topaz Studio all the time and Topaz Studio 2 does exactly that. It, it changes out backgrounds all over the place. It, it, night to dark to light to whatever. And I, I just, um, it, it's kind of here to stay, but the essence of the picture and the original photograph is still intact. So I don't know, is it, anybody else got an opinion about that? Well, I want to congratulate the photographer because they did a fabulous job of changing the background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's absolutely flawless. The only thing that I would suggest is I don't know if you're familiar with the dropper tool, but the background would have been more effective if the color had come from him, if they had picked up one of the blues or um, the and gray. The orange shirt. from the bird, yeah. Yeah, but the orange from the bird is different. So it it's, uh, it's a little jarring because it doesn't really match. But if you just use the dropper tool, but the, the way they executed the change on this was fabulous. And I congratulate what you talked about. Absolutely. Oh. I agree. I think it's great work. And I think that's that's really what we were trying to all do with people is give them tools, let them experiment, let them try to push the boundaries a little bit. And, they, and, and people are doing that nicely. 
and uh, I'm, I applaud it as well. Not only oh, that, great. but I think there was a little bit of light brought out to bring the Kestrel out um, as well. And it's it was so well done, very well done. Oh, and so this is I would just say this is another example. This image is not it's not sharp and it if you leave it in this configuration as opposed to putting a filter on it. Um, if you leave it in this configuration, to me, it needs to be sharp. Um, the hat behind her is a little sharper. Very, very busy. Um, this would be fun to play with. Try different filters. Try posterizing it. Try black and white. I would just have a field day because I like her. Um, her head is tilted a certain way. She's just got an attitude about her um, that makes her interesting to me. I I just would do a lot more with this image, a, a lot more work. You know, in these in these kind of festivals, especially um, if you really liked her as a subject, because they really do love to have their picture taken, you could ask her to, to step somewhere different where your background might have not been so busy. Good idea. Yeah, that one definitely has uh, quite a bit of blur to it. Um, and it's really interesting because I, I see a, a loss of detail as well. Um, I see kind of a blotchiness. I see the detail lost in the fingers here. Yeah. Just, I'm just seeing uh, like blotches here. The skin tones are kind of off. There's a lot of whites that are distracting in this whole piece over here. I just cropped that right out. This white piece here should be toned down maybe match the color that's in here so it doesn't stand out as much. I don't even know that I need to see all of him back there either. Dave, thought? Yeah, no, I I kind of agree with 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 what everyone said. Um I I honestly think it would take a lot. I I like her outfit and I like her attitude and I love her glasses. Mm -hmm. But I think it would take a lot of work to turn this into um a very different picture i think as was suggested i think the it would have been better to ask her to move if she would well the he, problem not have the are you going to wait and stalk her and and get her in <laughs> which we do a lot of you see these characters and we're like mine you know you just start stalking them I have to tell you that we, a couple of us sat in one place for like, I don't know, 25 minutes. There was this guy with a cape, with a hood, with all these shadows on it that was so cool. But he was buying something and he was in a line with a lot of other people. And I was like, ah, damn it, I'm sitting here until he moves someplace where I can take a picture. And it didn't happen. <laughs> it just didn't happen. <laughs> but exactly, exactly that thought pattern. So yeah, like, we have definitely stalked people. There's yeah. no question. When you see something or the dog or the pet or the kid, you 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 go into stalk mode. <laughs> I got that picture and I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> I know who you're referring to. The guy with the hood. You need more detail. If you had more detail in here, you could take out her face and just use her face. But the detail isn't there, so you can't work with it. So I think we got them all. We leave it in the air. Yeah. We did. Um, and I can tell you the winner, and then I'm going to announce it online tonight. Um, the winner for the month is Daydreamer by Mindy. Um, that was one of the first ones that we saw, the lady with the fingers on her face that was just with that really cool attitude. Um, yeah. She won for the month. Yeah. Hey. So. Congratulations, Mindy. Congratulations. You can keep up the good work. Yeah, and I think it's really great that everybody's really, really trying hard. I think that people next year will push a little harder. You need to be a little bit more self-critical um, when you're choosing what you want to submit and what you want to work on um, to give to us for, um, for looking at and for talking about. Um, because I think that, that the 
you know, if you go on a shoot like that and you're spending two or three hours, um, look at your pictures and, and see what other kinds of things you can do with them to make them even better. So, Thank you. Lori, I think this was your first uh, attempt at submitting to us, right? Say again, who? Lori. Mindy. She's muted. Oh, Lori, unmute yourself. You there? I don't know if she's still there. Okay. She did a good job, though, and she's uh, she's stepping up. And um, she got some nice establishing shots. The bird was just, like I said, I don't think anybody walked away with the bird, so don't feel bad about that yeah, one. Yeah, that's a but, tough one. But the other shot that you... You took with the game of the, the Game of Thrones. That that's it was a good establishing shot. So it's coming, it's all coming. You just got to throw your hat in the ring, and um, and all of us have done this where you you just get devastated sometimes with things that you think or feel are are moving to you and are good work by you, and then all of a sudden somebody else gets a hold of it and and they don't see it that way at all and you develop a little bit of a thick skin and then you develop a little bit more openness to trying other suggested things from other people instead of being defensive about it and it's hard it's very, well, very I hard. think that the most important thing that that I could tell anybody is duplicate so you're not you're not taking away your original image nobody's telling you to do that we're telling you duplicate it and try stuff and you don't have to be afraid. And then look at it compared to your original and see what you like better. So with that, Adrian, my comment of the day will be, and don't forget to become the delete king or queen. Oh, because yes. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. It yeah, doesn't I, you, work. If you keep them all. <laughs> yeah, you can't keep them all. <laughs> I think one of the issues, at least for me, is when you go to like a Renaissance fair, there's so many things to look at and so many people walking by. And, you know, even though we say, yeah, the right thing to do would be, you know, work the subject and and have the person ask the person, but you're you're moving kind of fast and you oh, I want to grab that person and you grab a quick shot and then you get home and it's blurred or whatever. It's not sharp enough. Um, so I think it's just hard. I wouldn't be, you know, like down on yourself for not getting it all because I, I must have deleted 500 photos. <laughs> and I would say this, that, that when I go on a shoot, my goal is in the end, and I, I am a delete queen. So when I come back home, in the end, if I shot 200 pictures, 400 pictures, whatever it is, I'm happy if in the end, when it's all said and done, I wind up with maybe 10 that I like and maybe three or four of them, when I work them, become something special. And then I delete. And that's why on the seventh day, they made that delete key. Because you just got to let it go. And and you're, you do you do tend to shoot a lot and, and try and uh, and see what you like. but and, and then work it and work it and work it. And then dump. Right. So. And yeah, when, when we did that basic composition workshop, I think I shared with you that I watched this whole lecture um, by Scott Kelby, and he is a heavy-duty professional photographer who goes out and does these shoots, and if he comes back with two really good ones, he's a happy camper. Exactly. And yeah, that, you know, from dozens and dozens and dozens of images. And that's what's great about digital photography. Why right. not? Right. Right? You don't like it? Dump it, you know? um so exactly right. okay this was yes, good everybody Thank you, everyone will be at shenanigans yep see you guys on see the people that are coming on thursday i'll put one more announcement out we have about 16 people now um 14 of whom are meeting for lunch um beforehand so i'll send out a reminder about all of that and mm -hmm. i would say try to get there uh about quarter to 11 if we're planning on getting seated when it opens at 11, and we're not waiting for people to straggle in and be late, which causes a late, <sighs> or a late start. Great. Because there is, there is uh, this yeah, guy there. who Anne said is a musician who's coming to do something special for us. Oh, nice. So, so um, he, you know, he's expecting us to be at Mad Arts at 1230. So. Perfect. Okay, I'll remind everybody of that. 
Yeah, I think they said. I think they said. Anna said he. They were bringing him in at noon. I think so. Right. To start to work with that. So so that all worked. And again, for those who are in here or those you talking to people, try to bring. If you have a camera, bring that in addition to the camera on your iPhone. If you can shoot both ways, shoot both ways, and try to take a wide angle lens. You do not need anything uh, heavy or big. You just need a, a wide angle and the fastest lens you have, meaning if you have a, a lens that requires less light, that's a good lens to have because you will be shooting in a lot of dark. <laughs> okay. But it's fun. All right. Okay. Good night, everybody. See those of you that are coming on Thursday. Good night. See you in a few.